Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Storytime with me, Mr. G, where I'm going to read the stories and you're going to come along for the adventures. Today's book is Don't Touch Me, I Said No, a story all adults should read to children. And it was written and illustrated by Zoe Pennant. Now, do we remember what an illustrator does? Well, an illustrator is the person who puts the pictures in the books that we read. Yeah, so that means Zoe wrote and illustrated this, and that is pretty cool if you ask Mr. G. Now, today's book is going to help us learn how to deal with potentially difficult situations that we might find ourselves in with friends or possibly our siblings. And siblings is another word for brothers and sisters. Yeah, new word. I like it. Siblings. Siblings. Pretty cool. And to help us learn how to deal with these situations, we're going to be aided and helped by some animal friends. Yeah. And these aren't just any ordinary animal friends. We're going to be helped by Kwame the giraffe, Abba the monkey, Asha the elephant, Addy the lion, and Fumi the zebra. Huh, pretty cool, huh? But you know what's even cooler than that? Our animal friends have superpowers. <sighs> Mr. G can't think of anything better than animal friends with superpowers. Well, maybe if Mr. G had some superpowers, that would be pretty cool. I could do with a couple superpowers, but we're just going to let our animal friends have them for today. Well, today we've got a long ways to go, so we had better get going because we're going to travel all the way from the country of Kenya on the continent of Africa all the way to England on an island. Yeah, all the way from Africa to England. It's so long 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 ways so if you have the book go ahead and grab it and you can read along or you can read the subtitles or you can listen to my voice and I will take you on this adventure like I always do but either way we had better get going so come on once upon a time there were these animals that lived in Africa a very hot country they were happy and loved being in their country. Their names were Kwame the giraffe, Abba the monkey, Asha the elephant, and Addy the lion. One day, Abba the monkey received a message from another animal, Fumi the zebra, that there were children in another country called England who needed their help. Abba swung through the trees to where her friends were gathered by the lake to give them the message. At the lake, Abba the monkey called all her friends around and said, Listen everyone, we've a problem. There are children in another country that need our help. Here we go again, said Kwame the giraffe. You always come to us to try and save the world. I know, but this time the problem is very serious, Abba grunted. Swinging her trunk, Asha the elephant walked over and said, Okay. Tell us about it. With our gifts, we should be able to help make a difference. Each animal was special since they all had their own gift that none of them took for granted. Kwame the giraffe not only could see very far because of his long neck, he also had the ability to speak to people's minds. Addy the lion had a loud roar and speed that made him quick as lightning. Asha the elephant was big and strong and had the wisdom to heal anyone's soul. While being able to swing through the trees, Abba the monkey could also see into the future. Where do I begin? asked Abba the monkey. There are children who need our help on safety and protecting their own bodies. Don't they have parents for that? said Addy. Yes, they do, answered Abba, but it's not enough. The world is changing so fast, they can't keep up. Okay, so 
What can we do? Asher the elephant asked. We're only animals. Why should they listen to us? Because we have the experience and the knowledge to share what we know. Our powers will help us. So, where are these children? asked Asha, shaking her big trunk. In England, stated Abba the monkey. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me we're not just trying to help these children, but have to travel to their cold country too? said Kwame. It'll be fun, like an adventure, laughed Abba. Come on, guys, these children really need our help. The friends looked at each other before nodding in agreement. Kwame the giraffe said, you know, I remember what it was like before you guys took me and his family. I was alone and had no awareness or idea of how to protect my body. I felt that I had no purpose in life, but you all showed me love and gave me hope so I can see how we can help in some way. The sun was going down and by the evening the animals tried to work out how it was going to work, how long it would take for them to travel, what could happen when they got to England, and how would they communicate with the people there. Asher the elephant asked, So now that we know we are doing this and we know we want to help, when do we leave? Well, no time like the present, confirmed Abba the monkey. What? said Kwame. You mean tonight? No, silly, said Abba chuckling. They all laughed. They could not wait for tomorrow. Leaving the lake behind, they each went to their separate homes. Morning came and the animals got ready to set off on their long journey to England. Kwame was not looking forward to being in a cold country where there was snow, rain, and cold wind. They traveled walking for many months, finding food along the way. Finally, they reached England. It was wet and cold. Okay, now that we have arrived, here's the plan, said Abba the monkey. Abba was the organizer and the one who always came up with the plans. I already know what children we are going to speak with. Since there are four of us and four of them, we will each have one child. But I thought we were saving all children, asked Addie the lion. By talking to just a few children, they will pass on the message to the others, and that's how it will get around to all the children around the world, answered Abba. Don't worry, this will work. Abba explained to the others what needed to be done and gave them all the information on how to speak to the children and get the message across. Excited, the animals thought this may not be so bad after all, and even Kwame had a little smile on his long face, even though he was feeling the cold. Nodding, they understood what needed to be done and headed off to start their missions. The game, Kiss Chase. Children running after another to kiss them. Mission, Kwame the Giraffe. Young person, six-year-old Alice. Alice was in her school playground and a couple of her friends were playing the kiss chase game. They asked Alice if she wished to play. Alice did not want to but could not say no. Kwame stepped in. Kiss chase is not a children's game, Alice, he said. Wow, said Alice. I just heard a voice in my head. You're right, said Kwame. Go and tell them no. Kiss chase is not a children's game and then go and tell your teacher. When you say the magic words, I said no, you'll have the powers to change the game. Wow, said Alice. Thank you so much. I, I now have the powers to say no and make up another game. Joyful, Alice ran off to tell her friends, shouting as she went, I said no, that game isn't a children's game, but I do have another game we can play. It's called Shops. Smiling, Kwame was chuffed. He felt proud. He had completed his mission. The game, Mums and Dads. Children playing a mum and dad adult roles. Mission, Patty the Lion. Young person, eight-year-old David. David is at his friend's house playing in their room. They are bored, so David said, I know of a game. Let's play Mums and Dads. Patty the Lion sped past David's window. David glimpsed at him and said, hold on a minute. What is that outside? He ran outside to see. He came across a lion on the road. Oh my, where have you come from? Addie purred. I'm here to give you a message. 
David was shocked. You can talk? Smiling, Eddie the lion nodded. Yes, I can, but you must listen to me. Playing mums and dads are not for children to play. Now go and shout to all the children that showed you that game, I said no, and a magical thing will happen. What? Well, what will happen? Asked David. Addie said, you will be able to create a new game for children to play. Thank you so much, lion, said David. Addie roared. He knew his mission was done. The game, doctors and nurses. Children playing a doctor and nurse or looking at bodies can be involved. Mission, Abba the monkey. Young person, nine-year-old Lisa. Lisa had one brother and two sisters, and they all loved playing together, having fun. One day, Lisa shared a game called Doctors and Nurses. This was Abba's chance to get into the room and speak to Lisa. My dear Lisa, Abba said. Shocked, Lisa nearly fell off a chair she was sitting on in her room. How did you get in here and you can talk? Yes, I can, Abba smiled. I've come to give you a message. Doctors and nurses and touching other children's private parts is not a game for children. Now, when you go back to the children that showed you that game, shout, I said no. That game is not for children. Then watch, a magical thing will happen. What will that be? Asked Lisa. You will have the power to create another safer game to play. Lisa was overjoyed. Wow, that sounds like fun. Thank you so much, monkey. I'll let you into something else too, said Abba. When you are older, you will become a doctor. Lisa was stunned with excitement. She could not say anything. Abba did a somersault. She was pleased she had finished her mission. The game, Girlfriends and Boyfriends. Children playing a girlfriend and boyfriend. Mission, Asha the Elephant. Young person, 10-year-old Ken. Ken loved going to his youth club. It was there that the young people did a lot of activities. Even so, they were still bored. So, his friends came up with a game called Boyfriends and Girlfriends that they could play. Ken did not want to play, but did not know how to say no. Asher the Elephant sat outside the youth club, waiting. She knew this was her chance to step in. This was when Ken saw her. What is that big thing over there? Ken asked as he went over. I'm here to help you have a voice, said Asher the Elephant. Wow, you can talk, exclaimed Ken excitedly. Asha laughed. Yes, I can. I can also see that you don't want to play that game and don't know how to say no. Taking her trunk, she places it on his head. Now, when you go back, you will shout, I said no, and magic will happen. What magic? asked Ken, looking very excited. You'll have the power to create another game to play that they will play with you. Ken headed off shouting, thank you so much, elephant. Turning her trunk high above her head, Asha proudly walked on. She had made a difference to a child's life. Their mission has finished. The animals got back together to share their stories about the children they had met. Abba said, yes, we did it. Now let the real magic begin. The animals made their way back home to Kenya in Africa. The end. Well, wasn't that pretty cool? How when the children, aided by these animals, these awesome animals, they were able to have the power to stand in their own power, as Mr. G says, and say no. And they were able to change the games because they were playing some pretty adult games, right? It's some games that children don't need to play. So if we ever find ourselves in that situation, what do we need to do? We need to go find an adult and we need to say, no, I don't feel comfortable with this. I don't want to do this and we need to do something else. And oftentimes we'll find that when we do that, things will change and we can play something that's more appropriate for us. So if you're ever in that situation, remember first you say no and then you go find an adult. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this book. If you want to buy it, go down to the description below and you can click on a link 
And if you liked it, please hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell so that way you'll be notified when Mr. G comes out with a new video. I am so glad that you were able to join on this huge adventure from the continent of Africa to the island of England, or the island that England's on, I should say, because it's not the only place on that island. And I just hope you had the best time. And I want you to remember, as always, that you are fabulous. And I love that about you. Peace out.